Here's Pablo Picasso, the founding father of Cubism. And the last thing you'd call him is unoriginal. But early in his career, Picasso was a little bit of a copycat, and he was heavily influenced by artistic styles called realism and naturalism. When he started painting in the late 1800s, Picasso was obviously onto something as an artist, because he became one of the most prolific painters and very much defined his own artistic style. But today, I'm going to be showing you why imitating, then innovating, is, like Picasso, the best way to get started as a creator. Let's take a look at these paintings. So the first is called Self-Portrait from 1896. The second, Science and Charity from 1897. And the third, a 1917 portrait of Olga in an armchair. Now guess which ones were made by Picasso? The answer is all of them. And contrast that with this. Picasso obviously also made these paintings, right? Nope. All of these were made by other painters who have since emulated Picasso's style. None of these paintings were made by him. Now let me illustrate another example from outside of the art world. Stephen King is the author of 19 screenplays, 61 novels, 210 short stories, and many other works under different pen names. You might think that an author like Stephen King, who wrote the book on writing, never had writer's block. But actually, in that book, on writing, he described a time in college when he decided not to present his new novel called Sword in the Darkness to his class. And that led him to suffer a four-month writer's block. Ask any struggling artist, what is the most difficult part of being creative? And they'll most likely say something like, finding my style. But what do we actually do to solve this problem? And here I have a solution for you. Imitation is the first step to mastery, to overcome creative block, to find your voice, and to understand the craft better. You should imitate others, and then later, you can innovate. If you study art history, you'll see how often creative blocks have both haunted and stalled humanity. And for years, people didn't know how to solve these creative blocks. So in ancient Rome, for example, people didn't even believe that creativity came from humans. And you can see the residue of their thinking today in the etymology of the word genius. Elizabeth Gilbert says that the Romans believed that genius came from these magically divine beings who often lived inside the walls of an artist's studio. You know, kind of like Dobby from Harry Potter or something. And then every now and then that genie would come out and shower the artist with a creative spirit. But sometimes that genie just won't show up. And when the frustration kicks in, creatives go to absurd ends to unblock themselves. Picasso wouldn't throw away his old clothes, hair trimmings, or fingernail clippings for fear that it would mean losing part of his essence. Charles Dickens carried a navigational compass with him at all times and always faced north when he slept a practice that he believed improved both his creativity and his writing. And then there's good old Dr. Seuss, who kept an immense collection of nearly 300 hats. And whenever he faced writer's block, he would just go from hat to hat, put one on, take it off, another one, take it off, and then once he felt inspired with a new hat, he'd just go back to typing. But the most powerful and often replicated is imitation, copying others, which can actually be as insightful as having a conversation with the artists themselves. You know, Hunter S. Thompson handwrote every word of The Great Gatsby multiple times just so what he could feel what it was like to write a world-class novel. And then there's John Cleese of Monty Python fame who copied jokes that he heard on the radio just so that he could recite them to his friends at school all day. But my favorite story comes from Quentin Tarantino, who's notorious for copying films that he likes. And then what he'll do is he'll sketch similar shots into his own movies. And these visual references to other movies have become one of Tarantino's trademarks. I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. And paradoxically, it's because of that copying that Tarantino has a more unique style than just about any film director in the world. 
And it's from Tarantino that we learn that the road to originality is paved with the inspiration of others. Now, why does this imitation practice work? Well, writers so often worry about finding their voice. But I've never liked that metaphor because your voice, it isn't like an Easter egg that's just waiting for you to find it. It's actually something that you discover by writing frequently, publishing often, and then listening to feedback when you do. Imitating the work of people that you admire helps you get over yourself and get to actually putting words on the page. It allows you to be generative before you've developed your own approach, which is going to come with time. By the way, if you'd like to imitate my writing style, click subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss any future videos. And I've also linked to my free 50 days of writing email series in the description below. But what happens if you can't copy perfectly? This was a big epiphany for me. And it's that the best thing about copying is that the failure to do so is a success in and out of itself. When you do a bad job copying somebody, you end up revealing your own voice. Take, for example, talk show comedians who have tried to copy their idols, failed, and then become great themselves. So Johnny Carson tried to copy Jack Benny, but failed and won six Emmy Awards. Then David Letterman tried to copy Johnny Carson, but failed and became one of America's great television hosts. And reflecting on his own influences, another comedian, Conan O'Brien, said, Quote, it is our failure to become our perceived ideal that ultimately defines us and makes us unique. See, all of these comedians learned that imitation reveals our identity, especially when we fall short of the people that we admire. See, everybody has a voice just like everyone has a personality. But that voice, it can be hard to find because it's invisible to you until you interact with other people. But eventually, you do end up finding your voice, which is really another way of saying the things that make you unique and also improve the quality of your work. Great creatives nurture their uniqueness, which helps them develop their voice. When I talk to musicians, they tell me that playing music teaches them more about sound than listening to it ever can. And just as the architecture of sound comes to life when you actually string the chords on your guitar or tap those keys on your piano, imitating the writing styles of other people is going to help you embody the greatness of your favorite writers. Writing, though, is the rare artistic medium where imitation isn't really encouraged. But I encourage you to copy obsessively, but just be sure to give other people credit whenever you publish their ideas in quote form or something like that. Your voice, it's not just going to reveal itself if you just sit back and think. You have to write and to publish frequently. And then you can nurture your voice with all kinds of unique experiences. Things like living in another country. Or you can also develop your voice by blending a unique cocktail of influences. Like reading obscure books that you won't find on the front table at your local bookstore. And as you share ideas in public, pay attention to the articles that people resonate with and the compliments that your readers give you, and when they align with the voice that you already have and the one that you want to develop, double down on what's working for you. And my motto for all of this is, imitate, then innovate. If you're looking for other ways to improve your writing, I'm going to be making a video that is all about the serendipity of note taking, which you'll be able to improve your writing as well and I'll link to it right up here when I publish. And in the meantime, you can start by clicking here for the previous videos that I've already uploaded.